Mother Nature has long created monstrous killers. The deadliest of these is not the biggest or the fastest. In fact, it's nearly invisible. This floating killer preys on anything in its path, and it is coming into contact with humans more and more. The thing will outswim most people. It's got 24 eyes. And in a shock and a panic, this, I went to flick the tentacle off with my, my hand. The venom that it possesses is one of the most deadly venoms that we know. It felt like someone was just like pouring acid over the top of me. I mean, it was so painful. Eyewitnesses report seeing gelatinous monsters often growing to the size of a small car and usually in large packs called blooms. Their tentacles grow to ten times the length of their body and contain millions of tiny venomous cells or tomatocysts that dispense their deadly poison. Those who've encountered these floating killers suggest that massive quantities of these creatures could be taking over the seas. Chris Jones lives in Queensland, Australia and had a frightening nocturnal encounter while trying to get a glimpse of a beached sperm whale. The worst encounter I've ever had with box jellyfish was actually several box jellyfish. Mm. I went out with a torch, a flashlight, and I was wading through the water trying to spot the, the outline of this whale in the shallow water. Jones began wading in to get a closer look, knowing that jellyfish might be in the water. And knowing that box jellyfish at night time uh, basically sit on the bottom, they, they sleep as such on the bottom, I was doing the old frog walk, which is to take very large, long steps into the water, hoping to avoid or minimize the chances of encountering any box jellyfish in the water. Jones was attacked several times on the legs by the swarms of deadly stingers. I waded through the tentacles, it hit the lower parts of my legs. It was a very large animal, as were the next two or three. I actually lost count because I was in so much pain, I don't know how many I hit in the end. The box jellyfish is so lethal that victims can die within three minutes of contact. I thought, this is it. This is, I've just had too much venom. These are big animals. I've hit more than once. And the, the pain I was feeling in my chest, I've never felt that before. It was, it, was, it was almost like I was having a heart attack. Jones was rushed to the hospital by a friend who was there with him. The pain was crushing, and I thought, you know what? They're going to find my body in the morning, lying on this beach, dead from a box jellyfish. He survived, but fears remain that this species' population is growing not only in number, but in size. And I could feel that it was, it was a serious enough weight that it wasn't a small animal, it was quite a large animal. Jellyfish blooms are really a problem worldwide. Professor John Finnerty, a professor at the Boston University Marine Biology Program, has studied the jellyfish population expansion or bloom. A jellyfish bloom is essentially it's a, a rapid population increase in large jellyfish, and they can become so abundant and so dense that they can essentially create, you know, slicks on the water. It's almost, you know, c continuous jellyfish. Jellyfish inhabit every ocean of the world. And the problem is exploding as swarms of these monsters are getting closer and closer. In Spain, an invasion of 60 million jellyfish swept up on Spanish beaches and stung more than 70,000 people. Off Northern Ireland, a 10-mile wide and 42-foot thick swarm of these monsters wiped out the salmon population, killing some 120,000 fish. And in the summer of 2008, the United States eastern seaboard saw masses of jellyfish attacking swimmers and wading children. Finnerty believes that mankind may be feeding the growth of these monsters. There, there are some things we're doing, the humans are impacting the ocean, and it could be increasing the frequency of these really devastating jellyfish blooms. Uh, one thing that we're doing, for example, is we're creating dead zones in the ocean. These are areas where, because of pollution, especially fertilizer runoff, uh, encourage the growth of lots of plankton in these areas of the ocean. Those plankton consume lots of oxygen, and because of that, there's not much oxygen in the water. This lack of oxygen in the water makes the ocean a perfect spawning ground for jellyfish. This is because the oxygen depletion would wipe out many other species, 
while the resilient jellyfish would flourish due to the lack of competition for food sources. The other sea life do not do as well. Jellyfishes are actually fairly, they appear to be very, very hardy and resilient in the face of some of the things we're doing to the oceans. So they become very abundant in these areas. Finnerty isn't alone in his views. There is a theory as such that global warming has caused a rise in temperatures and seawater and that has contributed to their growth. Scientific estimates say the world's jellyfish population is growing at an alarming rate. Historically, massive blooms of Nomura jellyfish have been reported only about once every 40 years. In 1920, 1958, and 1995. But since 2002, the Nomuras have invaded Japan's waters five times. This increase could have terrifying implications due to their venomous makeup. There are some experts, however, who remain skeptical. Mike Kingsford, a biologist from Jamestown University, Australia, believes more study is needed. Well, it's actually quite interesting. Given the hype on jellyfish, there's actually very little known about where they are. I think there's a paranoia out there that every time you get stung, you're going to die. That's not the case. If you include um, both the stingers and Arakanji jellyfish, probably less than 0.5% of people actually get killed by them. Jellyfish encounters appear most prevalent in the Pacific Ocean, and it is here that Monster Quest will launch its expedition. The team will search in Japan, where a recent influx of jellyfish has had a devastating effect, and off the coast of Australia, home to the deadly box jellyfish, the most feared predator of the sea. There's a theory going around that jellyfish are getting bigger all over the world, and this is the place where the jellyfish are the most lethal. And that's what our goal is, to go out there and see if we can document that, that phenomenon. The Pacific is home to thousands of different types of jellyfish, including the deadly box jelly and iriconji. These waters are also home to a variety of deadly predators, including stingrays and bull sharks, making this one of the riskiest expeditions to date. Leading the expedition is diver Dale Pearson. We're going to try to document the biggest one we can find. The team will also attempt to find evidence of larger than normal populations with a focus on the dangerous box jellyfish. Pearson has designed extra precautions to minimize the chance of a potentially lethal sting. We're going to go through some pretty serious protocol. When we get out of the water, we're going to have a vinegar wash. We're going to wash ourselves down with the vinegar, allow 30 seconds to uh, deactivate any chemical or uh, any of the tentacles that might be stuck to our wetsuit. This is the gear we brought. We've got underwater communication systems, full face mask, and what that's going to do is that's going to protect our face so we don't have any skin exposed right up here around the mouth in case we get a shot to the face. Underwater videography equipment to document whatever we find. Obviously, full wetsuits, gloves, booties, everything. Completely cover up all your skin. Jellyfish can be especially difficult to deal with because their tentacles can often be very hard to see. I figure if it's got tentacles a couple meters off of it you, that are invisible, you don't know which way the tentacles are going. There's a certain amount of uh, risk that's involved to getting that close to get the shots. If something happens and I catch enough tentacle from one of those things, that I'll be dead before I get in the boat. The box species are known to rest on the ocean floor at night. As a result, the team will begin by searching during nighttime hours. Stop, 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 stop. Paul and I are going to go dive in and hit the bottom and basically comb the bottom and see if we can find anything dormant on the bottom at night. While the darkness provided by a night dive increases the chances of quickly spotting the jellyfish's bioluminescent body, it also increases the risks involved. The difference between diving at night and diving in the day is obviously extremely limited visibility. You can't see anything except for what's illuminated by your lights. The thing that concerns me here is the bull sharks. Bull sharks got the highest testosterone of any shark in the ocean and there's some big ones here. I don't have any dive armor with me. So hopefully uh, the extra risk that's involved going night diving will be fruitful. We'll find what we're looking for this way. The team begins its search near the Great Barrier Reef, 15 miles off the coast of Cairns, Australia. Ready to roll. 
The divers enter the water, keeping go. a keen eye out for any predators that may be nearby. Topside, comm check. Just checking to see if you guys can hear me, okay? Topside, topside, be advised. You're coming in very weak, over. We did not copy you down here, over. The problems with the communication system means that help from the surface will be limited. Topside, copy. Can you guys hear me any better now? We do not read you. You are very scrambled. The divers will need to be more alert to communicate with each other in order to compensate. As the divers make their way through the water, suddenly something appears out of the blackness. The fish scatter. Suddenly there's another. The divers find themselves in the middle of a shark feeding frenzy. Well, we got everything. Monster Quest is searching the waters surrounding the Great Barrier Reef for growing populations of deadly jellyfish. Jellyfish are one of the oldest species on the planet, having inhabited the Earth's oceans for millions of years. A recent fossil discovery in Utah dates the species at over 500 million years old. Amazingly, very little evolutionary change has occurred in that time. The mere existence of this creature has haunted sailors throughout history. The ship Karanda was in high seas near the Fiji Islands. The ship was fighting to stay seaworthy when a giant wave crashed across its deck and a massive jellyfish appeared. The crew estimated the creature to be in excess of 20 tons. The ship's captain quickly sent out an SOS call begging for help in freeing the ship of the beast. Before help arrived, a crewman was hit by the tentacles his skin was severely burned. Another vessel finally arrived and used a high-powered hose to free the Karanda from the grasp of the huge jellyfish. Unfortunately, it was too late for the injured sailor who died from his wounds. The early Aboriginal people of Australia have long known about the deadly box jellyfish and depictions of this feared and mysterious creature continue to this day. It was not until after the death of a five-year-old boy at Cardwell, Australia in 1955 that Chironex fleckeri, or the box jellyfish, was officially named. Today, scientists remain curious about the jellyfish and there is less known about the dangerous box species than any other. Box jellyfish are square, hence the name box jellyfish. Um, they can be quite large. Dr. Jamie Seymour is 